Today in class, we're going to talk about three-dimensional data in ArcGIS Pro. And as like a lot of things in this class, this is its own huge topic onto itself. Um, let me show you what the end goal is I'd like to try to do with you today. Um, something like that. So what you're looking at on the screen here is a data set I've provided you with as a two-dimensional footprint, um, a two-dimensional polygon that we're going to then convert into what's called a multi-patch. And these green things that you see around it are what are, it's, it's called LIDAR. Raise your hand if you've heard of LIDAR before. Oh, a lot of you have. Okay, what's LIDAR? Someone tell me what LIDAR is. How about, you want to, I'm sorry, I don't know your names yet. What's LIDAR? Um, it's <laughs> Um, kind of. Anybody else want to add to that? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Where have you, I'm just curious, where have you guys come across LIDAR before in your studies? I didn't think, I didn't know if you guys, I don't, do they teach that in the other classes or you guys just know about LIDAR? I don't know. How do you know about that? Fiction? Oh, okay. I don't know. Okay. That's cool. Yeah. So we're going to use a LIDAR data set. We're going to create um, some 3D buildings. Or we're going to apply um, textures uh, to them to make them look somewhat realistic. Now, what we create is not going to be, you know, it's not going to be industrial light and magic grade 3D, but it'll get you started with it. Um, the sh what, what ArcGIS Pro can do in terms of building real world kinds of things. Um, so you should have already gone ahead and downloaded the data sets. And like I like to always do, um, I hope that you guys have been finding this graphic helpful to just kind of show you where we're going on the road here. So we're in week three now. So we did concepts. We, we, you've now had some just work with ArcGIS Pro and ArcGIS Online. So today in the roadmap, we're covering this 3D geospatial data and some ArcGIS Pro um, 3D functionality. Next class, we're going to talk about City Engine. And at the end of this class, if you want to jump ahead to the slides, through the slides I, I gave out, um, I'll show you a little bit about how what I, I'm talking about today with our hands-on activities related to um, really to game building. But game building, simulations, whatever you want to call it, um, that's where this is going, right? So it sounds like you guys are all mostly familiar with LiDAR, but here it is. I just want to cover the background on it. Light detection and ranging. It's a remote sensing method used to examine the surface of the Earth. So there's a link that you can look up if you want to learn more about it. LiDAR is a really important source of data used in a lot of applications, especially GIS. It's very good for getting um, a view of terrain, of buildings. It's very precise. Lasers are basically pointed at objects and what are called point clouds are created to show you the, the shape and form of whatever the laser detected. And that's why your download for today was actually so big. Um, if you look, um, this this one right here in an LAS file, that's a LiDAR data set, it's 800 megabytes. Um, it's actually, on some probably overkill for what I would need, need with it, but I thought it might be interesting just to, to look at it. Um, but that's a LiDAR data set, an LAS file, okay? And where I got that from is um, from this link, so what I gave you guys was I went to um, where we are here in Monroe County, and um, they it's really pretty great. It's got um, from 2017, all of Monroe County LIDAR was flown, I believe, in airplanes, and uh, all that data is publicly available. So this is all good material, possibly for your final project in this class. Even if Monroe County isn't what you're interested in, the RIT campus, um, for the most part, was covered by this particular tile that's uh, shown in blue here. And that's what that's what that 800 megabyte file is that chunk, that, that tile there. Um, so you could look for where you're from or other places, but it was a really nice way to just access um, data. And also it kind of ties in a little bit with what we talked about last week. If you look at, um, no, I guess that really, I was thinking that, that maybe that's an ArcGIS online, but that's some kind of web-based mapping tool, kind of similar to what we uh, saw last week with ArcGIS online. Okay, so that's LiDAR. Now, another thing we haven't talked about, has anybody ever heard of a multi-patch layer in ArcGIS Pro? Does that ring a bell for anybody? 
No. Okay, let's just just talk about what it is because we're going to work with it a little bit. Um, so as best as you can see it here on the screen, or if you want to go look that link up, Multi-patch feature classes contain the vector geometry of a feature and its descriptive attributes. And it's basically a way to create a three-dimensional object. So if you look at these kind of simple uh, pictures, you know, these shapes here, like this is kind of, we're going to do some of this stuff. So you say you take this like two-dimensional trapezoid, you can grab a handle on it and pull it up to do, you know, in this case, a real simple extrusion, but that is a true three-dimensional object that you can then do other things with. So that's what we're going to do today is we're going to convert a two-dimensional shape into a three-dimensional multi-patch. And then from that multi-patch, we are going to um, add some uh, some pictures or textures to it and so forth. So if you haven't heard of what a multi-patch is, um, that's what it is. And I'm not an expert on this. Um, I've learned just a little bit how to get it going. But again, this could be really good material for a final project, or if you really want to build some kind of game world based on the real world, um, multi-patches are going to come up if you use Esri tools to, uh, to get yourself there. Okay. So that's what a multi-patch is. That'll come up. Okay. And um, another thing, vertical coordinate systems. As you get into the three-dimensional world, We've only really talked about horizontal coordinate systems as much as you might remember that back in um, in week one when we were down here talking about GIS concepts, um, this very bottom of this diagram. We talked about map projections, coordinate systems, and how they're important for um, showing where things are located in the world. So vertical coordinate systems are very important now for three-dimensional things because you have to show – and have a way to ground um, where something is in three-dimensional space. Basically, there's X, Y, and Z, right? So this is basically the Z in, um, in, in, uh, in ArcGIS Pro. And behind the scenes, when I was preparing this lecture today, I, I lost several hours of time because I didn't have vertical coordinate systems set up. So I tried to, like, get rid of all that for you guys to deal with. But as we get into final project time, um, if this video, if you watch this, um, if you're running into problems with your three-dimensional data, the vertical coordinate system, you have to keep an eye on it. And I'll point it out to you as we go through the hands-on um, things for today. Um, but that's going to be important, again, like I said, to ground like a multi-patch, like something like this. Um, for sake of discussion, just say that this extruded trapezoid was a building, right? The building knows it's X and Y, but it also has to know it's Z. It has to know where it, where it is on the ground. Um, in terms of a, of a coordinate system. So um, that's going to, that'll be coming up. Okay. And I will mention to give credit where credit is due. Um, what I, what I do for this kind of, sometimes I'll find an existing tutorial and then I modify it for me. So for me, it helps me to learn myself, but I feel like, you know, I want to give you more of a value added experience and say, here, just do this tutorial and call me, you know, call me the next day. So if, if your attention is wandering um, in terms of following me, this is where we're going to do most of what I got out of here, which ironically, was, it talks about Penn State where I went to graduate school, but I've modified it so it's RIT, right? And so now I feel like I have my head around more of behind the scenes of where, uh, where this is all coming from. But it was actually a really helpful tutorial for me um, to, uh, to learn about how to do all this stuff. So, okay. So any questions on any of that stuff? Those background concepts, just because they're going to come up in the class today. No? All right. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to um, create some 3D buildings, do some multi-patch editing, and just sort of general use of 3D tools. Um, assuming that you did that tutorial, you now have least, at, at least has seen the scene view, which is different than the map, which is your 3D environment. Um, and let's just get down to it. So assuming that you've downloaded and unzipped those data sets, I'm going to fire up um, ArcGIS Pro. Okay. 
And right out of the gate, just follow this closely. Um, at least this is the way that I did it to make it go smooth. And again, my ArcGIS Pro might look different than what you have out there. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna create a new project. I'm gonna put it right in where I downloaded those data sets. So I put mine in C temp, and then they got extracted to this folder 3A hands on. And okay, now I'm not gonna create a new pro I'm not, I'm not gonna create a new folder. Okay. And I'm gonna call it um, 3A 3D test, something like that. So week, we're in class three, the first class of the week, doing 3D tests and um, so forth. Okay, so I'm going to do it like that. So again, I put it, right, I pointed it right at the folder that I downloaded. In fact, we can watch behind the scenes if you want. And I did not create a new folder, and I'll show you the reason why I did that. It just, is, it just can make life a little easier for yourself, right? So I hit okay. And you can see behind the scenes, as ArcGIS Pro gets fired up, it puts my project, my toolbox, the default geo database that comes with the new project. Um, you can kind of see a slight time difference. Like this was from eight fifth, you know, a minute ago. These are from yesterday when I packaged this all up. And um, if I go to catalog, and then I go to folder. And then I expand the home folder. Again, it's got a little house icon on it. Everything is there now. So I've got, instead of having a hunt around for different folders all over the place looking for where my data is, um, I've got everything there. So what I gave you was, this is the LiDAR data set, the LAS. We'll look at that in a second. You've got a file geo database, RAT campus building sample. If you expand that out, you have two feature classes in there, the, a two-dimensional building footprints, and then the, in a multi-patch um, that we just talked about what multi-patches are, where right now that's empty and we're going to um, kind of send, we're going to put the 2D ones into the 3D, okay? So just to check, does everybody, did you get that to work okay? Every, so again, I did it in that same folder just to make it convenient. So it's all right there. I don't have to go hunting around and like um, doing like, you know, add folder connection, that could be a pain. And ironically enough, in my other class, I just had a student write a, a reflection on an uh, assignment where like, yeah, you know, file management was a real challenging thing, for, you know. So again, if I think most of you are pretty comfortable with computer and data use in general, but, you know, this this can really start to get problematic if, um, if you haven't done this before. Okay. So to start with, let's go ahead and just take a look at, uh, I'm going to take RIT again, so I'm going to take this. 3A RIT campus building sample GDB. And I'm going to take the RIT 2D footprint, footprints. I'm just going to drag those over and put them in, um, put them there. And uh, what you have here, if you know, if you were to turn them off just to look at what's underneath, I basically use the Wallace Center and George Eastman Hall. Hey, have any of you ever actually gone to the library at RIT? Is that old school? Nobody goes to the library. Right? Like, have you actually gone to the library and sat and like read a book? Yeah. You haven't just gone and got a coffee at the coffee shop? No. <laughs> no, libraries are a great place. I love, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm just kind of kidding around, but like uh, the wall center in like the shed, you know, that's this particular map doesn't show it. Uh, but, you know, that's the new big construction project, right? You've probably seen that disrupted your walk, but that's the library. And then do you guys know what, what Eastman, George Eastman Hall, what goes on in there? Yeah, what goes on in George Eastman Hall? Um, is that all? Maybe is that all the, this part of the building too? I guess I'm thinking of this one thing that's like right here. That one, but basically, I think it's the tallest building on campus. So, what happens in the tallest building on campus? Anybody know? Okay. Anybody out there? Other guesses? Yeah. There's lots of offices. That's basically the, the brain center of RIT. So that's where you have like the office of the president, the office of the provost, the office of like finance, human resources, all the things that really make RIT as an organization happen. That's like the headquarter building of RIT. 
It's also one of the tallest buildings on campus. And then um, this this long linear thing kind of in front of it is where there's like um, a lot like criminal justice. There's a lot of college of liberal arts kind of departments there. But I was thinking of just this kind of square thing. George Eastman Hall is like that's the headquarters of RIT. It's also like I said, it's also one of it's also one of the taller buildings on campus. So I thought it would work well for um, what we're doing. So, so that's 2D. Now let's just take a look a little closer at this. Um, I, I want to mention this just for my own trouble that I ran into when preparing this lecture. So I thought it'd be good to mention it. Each of these um, two dimensional polygons, that's all they are. I, all I did was I took, I traced out some building outlines. It was sufficient for what I wanted to do. But if I were to right click on, um, on that and go to properties, and then go down to um, source, and then go under spatial reference. Um, I did want to point this kind of technical um, nuts and bolts kind of stuff out to you. So take a look, take a look here. So it's a, it uses a projected coordinate system, NAD State Plane New York West. Has anybody ever heard of state the State Plane Coordinate System? Does that ring a bell for anybody? Yeah, what's State Plane Coordinates? Yeah, there's, it's a special kind of map projection to create a coordinate system that in this case uses um, uses feet because, you know, we're in America, we don't use metric. And um, it's often used in surveying and there's different zones. There's like we're in the west zone. Um, I believe there's an east zone and a north zone. But this data set was specifically created in state plane coordinates to give it more precision, Okay. And it originates from a geographic coordinate system. But check this out down here. This is what I wanted to point out. It also uses a vertical coordinate system. So each of those shapes actually have a reference to a vertical coordinate system, which, again, is going to be used to um, show us where things are, like, you know, for example, in relation to um, sea level, above, below, and so forth. So all the vertices in this um, – in this uh, feature class, also note have an X, Y, and a Z. And that's really important because if they don't, a lot of your 3D stuff is going to go haywire. It's not going to know. You'll put something in 3D and it won't show up. It'll be invisible because it doesn't know where it is in the Z space. So I just wanted to point that out because we haven't really seen that before. Um, and in turn, if I were to go to the map, right-click on the map and go to Properties, um, Coordinate System, the way that ArcGIS Pro works is that the very first layer that goes into the map defines the projection coordinate system of the map itself. And when you have different kinds of data layers, they all have to agree on what projection they're in. So again, I right clicked on maps, went to coordinate system. Um, so right now it's set to that state plane west, but take a look. It's also those base maps are using WGS 84 Web Mercator which is the map projection, at least it used to be used in Google Maps. So you have multiple projections or coordinate systems inside it, but the map has to only can only use one, and it usually uses the one that's added from a layer. So the, this two-dimensional map is currently using state plane as the XY, but it's also using this, this nav D88 um, as, a, as a Z space, right? And... Um, I just wanted to point that out. It may it, it may not really resonate with you much, but again, file this away for later. Um, if you run into problems with things not showing up, make sure that you have um, um, a vertical datum set or something to really define what your Z is, okay? So I'll just cancel that. So, okay, that was just kind of a long explanation about like the Z axis. Um, and you can edit that. We're not going to get into editing these polygons, but... Um, Let's move on now to the kind of the more interesting part of things. So I'm going to um, next add a scene. Can anybody tell me the difference between a global scene and a local scene? Did you learn? You should have probably learned about that in your tutorial. 
Does any, what's the difference? Does anybody remember? Okay. If you were going to make a, a three-dimensional view of two buildings on the RIT campus, just by the name, which one do you think you would use? Yeah, exactly. That's why it's a local scene. They've, they're designed to be more optimized for something just like that. Smaller physical space. That's why you use things like a state plane coordinate system. It's a better rendering of what you have. A global scene is like you're going to show global climate change in a three-dimensional view of the earth. That, that's a global scene. But if you're getting down to real nuts and bolts stuff of like building corners and really precise modeling, you do a local scene. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a new local scene. And let's go ahead and add some things to that. So the first thing we're going to add are the um, this uh, multi-patch feature class. N and notice, by the way, too, the icon is a little different. A couple weeks ago, we talked about looking at the different icons to try to understand what these things are. So RIT 2D building footprints is a, is a two-dimensional polygon. And you can kind of tell by the icon, but look how the... The multi-patch has kind of like a, a pseudo three-dimensional looking block on it, right? That tells you that it's it's three-dimensional. It's not a 2D thing, right? And as you probably learned about you, um, in your tutorial, you know, the scene has 3D and 2D layers. So let's just get that in there. It's going to take that 3D building shapes. I'm going to drag it and kind of point my mouse over 3D layers and drop that on there. And I'll be curious during this class how you're, you're – if you're – are most of you using like a house computer, a lab computer for this? I'm curious how the performance is. You shouldn't really see any – there's nothing really to see in this. There's nothing in it. Um, but you can see even by adding it, it kind of zoomed me in kind of towards RIT, right? Even though – because when I created this data set behind the scenes for you, uh, it was already set to a certain extent. Now let's go ahead and add those 2D uh, building footprints in there as well. We're going to put that in the 3D layer. Okay. Now take a look at what you're seeing on the screen here. So there they are, right? It's the same thing we saw over in the map, the 2D map, but now they're in 3D space. And notice how they're kind of like, I don't know, kind of, how would you describe that? They're sort of like uh, cut off as it were, right? That's because now they're in 3D space, so the elevation, they're, notice down here the elevation surfaces, um, those elevation surfaces are kicking in, and because of the way the, the coordinates on the z-axis have been defined for each of these shapes, they're not completely matching up with, um, with the elevation surface, hence why they're being um, kind of skewed out. Now, RIT in general as, a, as an area is pretty flat. I mean, and I, I didn't do like high precision uh, elevations of each um, of each corner of these polygons, right? But um, you can kind of see the three dimensional effect happening now. Now let's add the lidar data. This is the one I'm really curious about how this is going to perform. Take that LAS file, drag that, and put that over in the 3D layers. On my computer, it takes a few seconds to really render it. But this is a good example just of LiDAR in general. And now I'm still in the um, top down. I haven't really done anything real 3D with it yet. But look at that. I mean, I personally find that very interesting. That's why LiDAR is such an amazing source of data. You're getting really down to the individual trees. You can see the... Um, 
you know, think of like a building like the Wallace Center. A big building's going to have stuff on the top. It's going to have, I don't know, air conditioners, vents, all the stuff that buildings need to kind of breathe, right? Now, to look around at this data set a little more, if I were to go to map, if it's already not on Explorer, um, this is where we can start to use some of the interesting tools. I've been using the control key V as in Victor, hold that down, then my left button to um, start to tilt it. Right, and the LiDAR can show you what the shapes of those buildings are. Remember how I said the Wallace Center was the tallest building on campus, right? So there, it's this, it's this thing right here. You know, again, that's a laser came down on top of all this stuff and grabbed lots of little points where they're called the point clouds. But it gives us some really nice um, kind of views of this area. And by the way, just out of, you know, this is why I, I, I probably could have reduced the size of it. But if you're curious about it, I mean, here's the overall data set, you know, that kind of um, pink outline. So it wasn't perfectly all RAT in there, but it was good enough for what, um, you know, I wanted to do. Okay, so as we were discussing, um, we've got the uh, 3D point clouds of LiDAR. Um, I can use the V Victor key to uh, rotate it and... Um, LiDAR is really, really good for stuff like this, like looking at vegetation, looking at buildings, um, and so forth. So that's what we're going to use to kind of create um, our, our, our 3D objects in RTX Pro. So did you guys get the LiDAR to work? Is it, how's the performance out there? Is it working okay? Yeah? So again, there's nothing in them yet. We haven't got there yet, yeah. That's where we're going to use the LiDAR to help create our buildings. Yeah, no worries. Um, so again, this is all good material for some kind of project in this class. If you want to build a game simulation environment, um, finding LiDAR data sets can be really helpful for that. Okay. okay and again, let's just review that vertical coordinate system thing. Um, you can turn the LiDAR off if, it's, if, it's, if it is a performance drag for you. Um, if I were to right click on the scene and go to properties, same thing, right? Current Z, current X, Y, because of those data layers that came in, um, Yeah, take a look at this. Elevation services, ground, world elevation 3D. When I turn that on, when I click its visibility, and I zoom in a little closer to those, to the two-dimensional minor, like a salmon pink color, and then I, um, I'll use my V key again to kind of like look at it a little closer like that. And um, which one was rotate? Oh, V was rotating. When I when I when I hold the V key down, kind of you kind of see how like this one corner is on the ground, and then this other thing's kind of like going up a little bit, right? That's because there's a vertical datum. This particular polygon has coordinates for the Z axis on them. If you if you look down in the middle, see how it's like one the X Y coordinate and then the Z coordinate, right? Because so I, I matched the corners of this to the Z chord in here, but when I turn that off, they're sort of no longer there's they're sort of, they're no longer really using the elevation surface, so they're just kind of see how they're floating up in the air here. They're they're not stuck down to the ground, right? Um, And again, you file this away, you may run into this problem in terms of like things are not on the ground like they should because they're not, they're not, they don't have an elevation surface that's being referenced because I turned it off. Okay. 
And when I do that, they come back on. Another thing you can do too, um, to take a look at when I right click, if I go to RIT 2D building footprints and I go to properties and I go to elevation, the features are at an absolute height using their geometry Z values. Okay. So you have different options depending um, on how your data is set up. But these, the geometry, the actual polygons have Z values in the coordinates. And that's why they're, you know, they're on the ground. Um, um, but there's other ways you can do it relative to the ground or just on the ground as the, tre uh, as the trees and so forth. And this is getting a little outside of honestly what I fully know all about. But um, it's just important to mention that. So if you were to turn that elevation surface off, you know, it would, it would, uh, have an impact based on this setting here. Okay. Okay. All right. Let's move on then. Um, so we've looked a little bit at the 3D space. We've looked at the LiDAR. Now what we're going to do is if I were to go back to um, sort of top down just to look at it, what I want to do, there's some kind of interesting tools where you can take a polygon, a two-dimensional polygon that has Z coordinate geometry and copy that directly into a multi-patch. And once it's into a multi-patch, then you can start doing things like working with the, uh, like this kind of stuff, right? So once it becomes sort of aware of it being a multi-patch three-dimensional space, you can then do modifications to it. And um, the way we're going to do that, get this to work correctly, is I'm going to go and um, go up here under map and then select and then select a rectangle. And then I'm going to draw a box around those two pink things. And notice how they turn blue, which means that they were selected. That um, a fancy way to describe it would be an interactive query. But if you looked under the hood too, if you looked at their attribute table, um, I've got two things that are selected as shown in blue, okay? Then what I'm going to do is go copy. And then under here, under paste, I'm going to go paste, paste special. And then paste special into 3D building shapes, keep source attribute values, okay? So I'm going to hit that. I'm going to hit okay. And um, we didn't look at the attribute table uh, of 3D building shapes at first, but if I were to go and turn the 2D layer off and look at the attribute table um, in 3D building shapes, I now have two things in there. So what it did was it took, it took the shapes from 2D buildings, copied them over into the 3D multi-patch and brought some attributes along because um, I, I probably should have showed you this um, um, before we did this, but like inside of 2D buildings, um, we have um, we had the name of the thing and some of its geometry. So by doing that paste special, we copied it out into the uh, into the three dimensional shapes. OK, did you guys get that to work? No. Want to do it again? All right, let's do it again. All right. Let me. Did anybody get it to work? Raise your hand if it worked. I haven't been able to all right. Anybody else have trouble getting the 2D buildings to show up? I got them to show up before we did the LiDAR. Yeah, I, I, I can't mess around like any order or something, but it doesn't show up. All right. Let's, let me do a quick pause. We'll just take a look. because Okay. Let's review some things. We did a little pause in the video recording. Um, let's see if we had some issues with buildings not showing up. So let's back up a little bit. Let's see if I can recreate that problem. So if I created a new local scene, just to start from scratch sort of, what order of operation did you guys use when you created the scene? What did you add first into the scene? Okay, let's do that then. So I got a new scene. All 
I'm just wondering why you guys didn't get the vertical coordinate system to show up when the layer went in. So you created a scene and that then you added 2D building footprints to the scene? I'm not sure. Yeah, okay. We, we did the 2D buildings and then we made the Right. We put the 2D buildings in the, in the two-dimensional map. Then we went to the scene. So right now, scene one just has it, it has the web mercator because of the um, the base map and no Z. So if I go to add 2D building footprints and I go right to putting it in 2D layers, and I uh, have a sort of coffee break moment here waiting for it to draw. Well, they showed up for me. I don't know what I did different than what you guys did. Because I, I, when I, I think I did the lot of the 3D and the LiDAR first. Okay. Okay. Well, let's, let's, um, this is good for lear learning because like I, I seriously struggled with this yesterday. Yeah. So, so notice that when I added, when I were out of the gate, I added 2D buildings in and I got from to state plane and a Z buildings are showing up. Let's try it again. Um, Okay. Let's see if I can create, recreate it like doing it this way. So here's another brand new scene. I'm going to go right for adding the LiDAR into 3D layers. And when I do that, I right click. Aha. See that, that could be a way if you added the LiDAR as the very first thing into the new scene, It'll show up, and there it is drawing at that scale. Then if I go add 2D building footprints, and um, Yeah, they're not they're not there now. They're not showing up. But then when I go under scene two properties, still don't, so that's that's one of these death in the details things, right? The the lighter if it comes in first doesn't set a Z, and you keep adding other things if that hasn't been set. Then so that's so what, what um, this is good for me because I get the first time doing this lesson. Um, but we have a screen recording. So if you come in a situation like this and things are this is good teachable moment. If things are not showing up when you know they should be, like we, the Wallace Center and the or Eastman Hall, we know they should be there. They're not. Make sure that um, you have a vertical, um, yeah, vertical or a current Z coordinate system. And in this case, um, so the LiDAR data does not have that, but this shape file, I'm sorry, this feature class I created for you guys does. A polygon Z is actually what it's called. Um, does when I hit OK, there, there, there's that kind of pseudo three dimensional view. Did everybody get that sorted out? Okay, if you had a trouble with it, all right. Let's back up then um, and and do this other thing over again. All right, so what we're going to do, let's just do this step again. We are going to take the 2D building footprints and copy them into the multi-patch uh, feature class. There's a special tool called Paste Special that allows you to do that. It takes Z-aware geometries and allows you to copy them into multi-patches. It kind of 
kind of kickstart creating things. All right. So let's do that again. So I'm going to go to, I'm in my scene, my 2D buildings. I first want to select those two shapes. Okay. So there's two shapes in that two dimensional thing. One is the Wallace library and one is Eastman hall. Okay. And I'm going to copy their geometry and their attributes into 3d building shapes that currently has nothing. I mean, I, I they were, but then I deleted it. Okay. So the way we're going to do that um, with, we're going to start with the 2d building footprints. I'm going to go to map select with a rectangle. Okay. And I have my map kind of, or my scene kind of generally around where those two things are. I'm going to drag a box around the two of them and then watch that attribute table down below. It turns blue because they now are selected. And that's a, a function of, of ArcGIS Pro we've seen before. Things that are selected from, um, from a record setter in blue. Okay. Everybody got that part? All right. Then we want to copy those two features, those two records. Hit copy. Okay. And then we're going to go to paste. Here, let's walk. We'll put, and actually, let's. I'll have 3D building shapes. I'll have that attribute table up to watch what happens. I'm going to go to paste, paste special. So it was a drop down, paste special. Paste special into 3D building shapes should be selected. Keep source attribute values. Hit OK. OK. And you see how. You see how in the, there was nothing. It's kind of like I feel like a magician. There was nothing up my sleeve. Now there's two records in the three dimensional shape table, and you start getting a. Um, I'm sure some of you have done. What's do they teach you guys? Maya is that the software you learn in game design development? How to build shapes. So you're probably familiar. And even Unity has that. The sort of the 3D whatever access right. Same. So now you know you're in a 3D space. All right. Do you guys get that to work? All right, great. Can we, you want to move forward then? Move forward? All right. So the very first thing we do is once we um, once we get something like that, we can start to modify it. So let's check this out. Let's do it this way. I'll close these attribute tables. I'm going to use my V as in Victor key to kind of turn to 3D space. I'm going to turn off the two-dimensional footprints. They're, we're done with those. I'm going to turn the LIDAR back on and let's do the Wallace. Let's do the library first. I'll zoom in on it kind of like that, get a sense of where it's at. Okay. Now, if you don't already, you should have, you should click on the edit menu. Um, edit vertices. and click on under Wallace library. Then move your mouse. See how my mouse has like a square, like a, a pointer with a square. If I go and click on it, do you see like a little, you get a little green ball that shows up. And what I can do is hold my mouse down on that green ball and I can start to pull the thing up. Okay. And what I can do is turn on the LIDAR to try to, I can use the LIDAR to get a sense of, see how there's like that yellowish roof, right? It's right now it's just a really primitive geometry. It's just a square, but I can start to kind of pull up. Um, I can use my V key to kind of, you know, rotate it around, right? And really now wherever I move under edit vertices, that green ball, I got a green ball for that face. I have a green ball for this face. Cause I'm starting to create the, those are the multi patches, right? It's, it goes back to this, this idea here, right? You, you can start to pull things out just to get things kind of generally laid out. Did you guys get that to work? Okay. Okay. So see if you can do the same thing now for the other building, for um, the Eastman building. Sorry, 
Um, what I did was I went, for me, I went to map explore to kind of pan the map back over and then I'm going to go zoom in a little more. I'm going to go to edit, edit vertices. Um, click on the, the, no, not that. Um, sometimes it gets a little confusing too. Like what I often like, so right now the, um, that's selected. The green, that blue is selected. I'm going to do clear. So I, so I modified that I did clear. Then I went back to explore and I'm going to move the map over here, edit vertices, select a feature. I move um, over to now the Wallace building. I grab the green thing, make it turn red, start pulling it up, and then turn the LIDAR on to kind of get a sense of how tall this building is. And so you can see I've got a ways to go, right? I pulled it up a little bit, but there's all this other stuff up here. So I'll keep on pulling it up until it's kind of like, eh, you know, again, these aren't, this isn't industrial light and magic level. Uh, yeah, what's up? Yeah, I found that yesterday. That just could be, I think you just need to wait. I found that yesterday there's like a clear like square, like exactly where you want to work is not showing up. Yeah, I would do that for 15 minutes. Oh, for 15 minutes. Okay. Um, all right. Anybody else running into that where it's not showing up? All right. Let me let me troubleshoot in just a second here. Um, so when you're done, by the way, too, I didn't mention this before. When If you're happy with the modification of your shape, you can also hit um, finish. Okay. And then when you're done editing in general, you can hit um, save. So edit and then save. And the program crashed. Okay. If you have a few minutes after class, we can uh, we can go back to it. Did it, did you guys were you able to pull those buildings up though? Did that work? So I mean I don't know about you. I find this very interesting again because we're using lidar to inform the design of our city here. Um, and um, whenever things are blue, remember that they're selected. Um, I've got about 15 minutes left. I think I can actually. Uh, do a little more with you guys here. Um, so. So then, you know, it's kind of neat because you can now start to see. Um, kind of perspectives, right? If you were to zoom in. Um, you know, if I'm standing on the roof of the library, you can see that in comparison to uh, the height of Eastman, which again, I said is probably, I think it's the tallest camp building on campus here, right? Okay. I'm just curious. I, I've never used Maya, but is there, is this similar to things like those kind of softwares use? More responsive. Okay. All right. Interesting. Because we've only looked at a little little bit of this, but let's do something different now. If you go back, we go back to um, this slide, this picture here. Notice how there's like windows and stuff on it. So you have the ability to add all that stuff in. Um, so let's do that now. Let's save our project just in case it crashes. Um, I'm going to turn LiDAR off. And this is kind of what we have now are these two really basic um, kind of geometries. We're just basically extrusions where I just pulled it up. But let's say I want to um, put some um, windows or something on this building. The way I'm going to do that is I'm going to go to edit. Um, edit vertices. Actually, I'm going to back up here. If you're still on modify, edit vertices, back up. 
We're going to go down to reshape. And then do multi-patch texture. Okay. And then select a multi-patch to texture. When I move my mouse over and I start to click, um, you can initially you can um, I'm clicking on the different faces from this view of the library. You can add a color, but what you can also do, check this out, if I click the load texture button and I go to my downloads for today. And then facade textures, click in there. Um, I borrowed these actually from the Penn State uh, tutorial that I based this whole thing on. But let's say we want to put some windows on it. So if we go to Windows JPEG, click on that, hit open. Now notice when I put my mouse over some of the shapes, it started to show me the windows. So what I can do, like, it doesn't really look that good. Um, I can hit zoom. I click zoom. I guess I need my scroll wheel. I'll, I'll zoom to make it look something like that and see how now it's um, it's changing the way the, the image looks. Like if I zoom in, I can make it really ugly like that. Something like that, right? Okay. So then to use that, to use that texture, I put my mouse over the thing and I click once. Okay, move my mouse off, and if I'm happy with it, I'll go ahead and do finish. Okay, and for some reason, it always wants to select the thing after you do that. Um, it's annoying. So what you do there is go clear, just to clear it out, because, you know, right? So you can continue with that. That was just one thing. If I hit the, the letter uh, V, hold my uh, mouse wheel down, I can rotate my little world here. Um, All right, so let's say I might want to um, do the roof now. I'll just, just to do this again. Select a multi-patch to texture. So I click initially on the thing. I can make it a color, but what I can do then is um, do load texture. And I'll grab roof. And maybe in this case I want to rotate it. Stick it on there like that. And then when I'm happy with it, I'll hit the um, the finish button. And again, it gets the whole thing selected, so I'll just hit clear. Um, so you guys can kind of see where this is going. I mean, these aren't, <laughs> again, these aren't like Academy Award uh, things, but the, the idea is there, right? So imagine if you wanted to do like um, a really cool, like, I mean, game of some kind. If you really took the time if you want to do something on campus, you could go and take a really good pictures of the buildings that you could then stick them on as textures and so forth. Um, do you guys get get that all to work okay? Yeah? Okay. Now, let me show you one other thing quickly. Um, how I, If I wanted to like modify this geometry a little bit, like most of the buildings on campus are not just simple squares, the extruded squares. They do have like you know, even a roof, a roof is going to have a thing that sticks out with for the mechanic, mechanical aspect of it. So you can you can do edits on the actual multi patch. So if I hit the letter V and just kind of make it completely top down. Like y you can even notice how in this image that I used, um, it's kind of showing like where there's like an air duct and like maybe some kind of upstairs utility area. Um, if, if you would first go down here. Turn on um, your constraints. And we're going to do another edit. We're going to go to edit. Edit vertices um, or back up on this. And then do reshape. Reshape. No, I'm sorry. Is it? It's edit vertices again. Re, under under reshape, edit vertices. All 
I can start to draw kind of a line. Um, Get to work. Let's see. Yeah, so you see how I did that? I dragged a, um, I basically sketched out a little square over the roof, and then I grabbed that green thing to, um, to carve out sort of a top from it. That's why I'm wondering if a software like Maya is probably really superior at that kind of thing of really editing the coordinate geometry. Um, did, did you guys follow that? I know that might have been a little clunky, but did you get that to work? So, so I carved, I edited the vertices. I basically created new vertices on the top patch, created a new sort of polygon patch, and then pulled, extruded that up. And that's where I got, um, got that. Okay. Any questions or any um, major technical issues out there before I um, kind of wrap things up for today? Did you guys generally follow along with all that? Okay. That's good, because again, like I said, this was a brand new lecture. I never did it before. So I thought it went pretty good for, you know, a lot of steps though. Okay. So keep this all in mind. Um, let me just kind of get this in the recording. So how does this all fit into something that you might be able to relate to? I've been mentioning game building a lot with this. So if I go back to my, um, my, my, my class roadmap. So today we covered 3D geospatial a little bit, a little bit about 3D uh, in RTS Pro. But using the examples now of the ArcGIS Maps SDK for Unity and Unity itself, um, this is, ex I mean, I based the lecture today on what I learned from students just like you. Um, I referenced this article earlier in the semester. Um, if you were to look at it, these are just the screenshots. But this is basically what we did um, in this project. We took, um, the students took, LIDAR from the same website from Monroe County. In this example, though, they wanted to build a serious game simulation related to lake level flooding, right? So they got the LIDAR data of the, of the study area. And then um, the one student, I believe his name was Liam, he really went to town on doing what I just showed you in a very high level, quick manner. He took the time to really build a world, you know, a real world based on the LIDAR where he really did the textures and roof and all, you know, he, this was his, it was a 40 hour week job for him. So imagine that's your job to do this, right? Then all of this got brought into Unity. And from there, that's where the game functionality kind of came in of like showing the water levels. And I'll show you this game later in the semester. Um, but that's kind of showing you how it all starts. If you're going to build a game or even a simulation based on the real on real world data, um, it really starts with kind of at this level, you know, here to get yourself over into there, right? So there's a link to that if you're curious to, to read more about um, all, the, all the details of how they did it, because there's a lot of good uh, discussion about all the tools that were used um, to um, create this world. So it does have applicability. Again, final project in the class. We can talk about that later in the semester. Hi, this is Brian Tomaszewski. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, comment, and share this video. Also, please consider subscribing to this channel and clicking the notification icon to stay up to date on new videos from this channel. Thanks for watching.